All right, so today we're going to look at something called classifying quadrilaterals. Classifying just really means what, how do we come up with a specific mathematical term we're going to use, as sort of the name for it. Um, some quick vocabulary, a polygon is a closed figure with at least three straight sides and angles. So closed meaning there's no openings and that there are straight lines connecting it together. And a quadrilateral would be any polygon with four sides and four angles. So four straight sides closed together, that's a quadrilateral. So right here we can see a bunch of different examples of quadrilaterals. We can see one down here at the bottom, another one there, another one there, another one there, there, and there. And so these are probably some shapes that you recognize that you learned it's about at some point in time. And we're gonna be thinking about what are the specific names and the ways that we can come up with those names. So this is our flow chart. And we'll come back to it in a second. It's kind of nice that the orientation of it with stuff on the top and the bottom is important. Uh, I found this online, I can't remember where, but I think it's pretty helpful. Um, we can classify or name them by identifying a few things. The first thing you're gonna look for is you're gonna look for any right angles. A right angle is like an L shape. That's not perfect, but imagine it's a perfect L and it would usually have a little box in there. We can see some better examples of one right there and there and there and there. Also in this shape right here, we've got some right angles. And none of the other quadrilaterals happen to have right angles, but these two on the bottom left side do. Then we're also gonna look for any congruent sides. Congruent is a term in math that means that they are equal in length. So usually you will be able to tell they are congruent because either they're gonna have a measurement that's the same on the top and the bottom, or you're gonna see something like these little tick marks. So if you see one mark, and then you're gonna see over somewhere else another mark, that means that those sides are equal. Or if you see two marks, and then on the other side you see another two marks, that means they're equal. Let me show you what I mean. If I had this shape right here, you can see it's got one mark on each side. That means all four sides are equal. It is the same with this shape right here. All four of these sides are equal to each other. On this shape right here, the left side and the right side are equal, but you can see since they're not all four the same, I'm gonna use two on the bottom and two on the top, and then that means the top and the bottom are equal and the left and the right are equal. Up here, we've got a left side and a right side that are equal and a top and a bottom that are equal. And then that is it for the other ones. The other ones are not quite equal. We don't see any real congruent things. Next and final thing we're gonna be looking for is parallel sides. Parallel means that if the sides were extended, they would never touch each other. So to give an example, we see these two arrows if we kept these arrows going on forever, they would never end up touching each other, so those are called parallel sides. Now we use little arrows kind of similar to those um, in math to indicate that sides are parallel. First off though, if you look at this shape and this shape, both of these have right angles in all four corners, which means automatically the top and the bottom are parallel, and we don't have to draw those arrows because we already see those right angles. But if we look over here on this shape, we can see that we are gonna to have to draw those angles. So I'm just gonna draw a little triangle on the bottom and a little triangle on the top, meaning those two sides match and are parallel. If we kept them going, they would not touch. And I'm gonna to add two to the left and two to the right, indicating those sides are also parallel and they would never touch. On this one right here, I'm gonna put some little arrows on the left and the right, meaning those sides are parallel. And then on the top and the bottom, I'm gonna add two sets of those so we can see we've got top and bottom parallel, left and right parallel, and then this shape right here, we have the top and the bottom are technically parallel. So once you've done all that, you can now get to classifying. A square, which you obviously know of already, has four congruent sides and it also has four right angles. It needs all of those things to be considered a square. Rectangle is very similar to a square, but instead of saying four congruent sides, we're saying two pairs of congruent sides, so the top and the bottom, and the left and the right. On the rhombus right here, we have four congruent sides, um, so all four of these sides are equal to each other, and then two pairs of parallel, so left and right, top and bottom. On the top, we've got a parallelogram, which has two pairs of congruent sides and two pairs of parallel sides. So the top and bottom match, not just in terms of being parallel, but also in terms of size. Same thing with the left and right. And then finally, 
On the top middle, we've got a trapezoid. It has one set of parallel lines or one pair of parallel lines. And then the last thing on the far right is just a quadrilateral because it doesn't have any congruent sides. It doesn't have any parallel sides, but it is still a closed polygon with four sides. So we call that a quadrilateral. So all of these are all going to be considered quadrilaterals. And these terms is how we classify them as specific as possible. Now, something we want to think about is that you always want to use the most specific, or in this case, the lowest on the flowchart name. So a square is more specific than a rectangle. Like if you look at this shape right here, the square, technically, we could say we've got four, we've got pair of congruent sides, pair of congruent sides, pair of parallel sides. So we could say that's also a parallelogram. We could even say it's also a rectangle. Um, technically, every square also is is always a rectangle, rhombus, parallelogram, and quadrilateral. But we are going to use we're going to classify it as a square that's more specific. So you might have heard someone say every square is a rectangle, but only some rectangles are squares um, because it needs to have all of those qualifications to match. So always go for the thing farthest on the bottom that you can. Um, if, the if that's the closest thing you can get, you got a parallelogram, but it doesn't have those right angles or it doesn't have those four congruent sides, you're going to keep calling it a parallelogram. And that's the way you classify quadrilaterals.